Welcome to World Bites, friend, where I share bite-sized messages that bring big time changes to you. I am Wumi Ademola, and I'm back again today to share with you the wonderful things that the Lord Jesus Christ taught about prayer. Like I said last time, the Lord's Prayer is not a mere prayer script that you religiously recite over and over again. Much, much more than that, the Lord's Prayer is the powerful prayer strategy that Jesus Christ uh, teaches us so that we can always get answers to prayer 100% of the time. Last time we talked about the first aspect of this prayer strategy, which is uh, found in the first part of verse, uh, verse 2 of Luke 11. Jesus said, when we pray, we are to say our Father. In other words, he says, direct your prayer request to the Father in the name of Jesus Christ the Son. And he guarantees you will always get answers to prayer when you do that. John chapter 16, 1623, Jesus says, whatever you ask the Father in my name, that is the name of Jesus Christ, the Son, you will receive. The Father will give you. Now, today, let's talk about the second aspect, which is found in the second part of verse 2. And Jesus simply said, he went on to say, when we pray, after you direct your prayer to the Father, you are to say, hallowed be your name. In other words, begin your time of prayer by hallowing the Lord, by worshiping him, by thanking him, and by praising him. Never ever start your prayer by bombarding God with requests. God do this for me. God do that for me. Every time you are to pray, you are to always begin by thanking, by praising, and by worshiping God, by hallowing God. You know, Psalm 100 and verse 4, that's what we're told. It says, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. And so you are coming into the courts of the Lord because you want God to do something for you. You want to bring your petition before him. But here the psalmist says, just like Jesus Christ taught us, that whenever you enter into the court of the Lord, which is the room of prayer, you are to start with thanksgiving. Start by thanking him, by praising him, and by blessing his name. No matter how desperate the situation, no matter how urgent the need, always take a moment to stop and thank God before you make your request known. You know, the Lord Jesus Christ, when he was standing before the tomb of Lazarus, his beloved friend that had been dead for four days, he was standing before the tomb. He didn't start out by saying, Father, I need you to raise this man from the dead. But what did the Lord Jesus Christ do? The Bible reveals to us in John chapter 11, verse 41, that Jesus began by thanking God. He lifted up his eyes and Jesus said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. And I know that you always hear me, but because of the people who are standing by, I said this, that they may believe that you sent me. And then the Bible says in verse 43, when he had said these things, what things? When he had given God thanks, the Bible says he cried out with a loud voice saying, Lazarus, come forth. And of course, we know that after that, Lazarus came forth. So if Jesus Christ faced with the desperate situation of a dead friend, I mean, what can be more urgent and desperate than that? He should have been full with emotion and say, oh, Father, I really need you to help me. Help me, help me get Lazarus out of this grave. But that was not what the Lord Jesus Christ did. He took a moment to say, Father, I thank you because you have heard me. Do you know that your ability to begin prayer with thanksgiving, praise, and worship is one of the greatest uh, uh, statements of faith to the Father? It just touches God, our Father's heart. So no matter how desperate the situation, no matter how urgent the need, you get, a, uh, you get unpleasant news, you receive a diagnosis from the doctor, the first thing you need to do, lift up that report and say, Father, I thank you because you've got this. This is bigger than you. I'm not going to be afraid. And then after that, you can begin to talk to God about it in detail. But the, your first response, your first response must be thanksgiving. I remember years ago, I got a very disappointing letter. The man I was engaged to at the time, he wrote a letter to me and he broke off the engagement. I was heartbroken, but I remember, I can never forget, I lifted up that letter before God and I said, God, I thank you because you are my main man and you, as long as you have not broken up with me, I know I'm going to be good. Of course, I was heartbroken. 
and I cried my heart out after that. But I am so grateful that my very first response to God about that situation was thanksgiving. And as a result, friend, a year exactly after that, I was married to my beloved husband, of whom today I'm going on 28 years, and I give God glory. So you get answers to prayer. You get quick answers to prayer when you begin your prayer, no matter how desperate the situation, by first taking time to thank God. Jesus Christ also, when he was faced with the situation of how to feed 5,000 people with just five loaves and two fish, and also another time how to feed 4,000 people with just seven loaves and a few fish, he did the same thing. He took time to thank God first before um, uh, making his request. And the Bible tells us in both instances, Matthew chapter 15 uh, and also Mark uh, chapter 8, the Bible says that because he gave God thanks before making his request known, the five loaves and two fish were supernaturally multiplied to feed the 5,000 with 12 baskets left over. And also the seven, fish, the seven loaves and the few fish were more than enough to feed uh, the 4,000 with also baskets left over. So Thanksgiving, friend, is a power that triggers the release of answers to prayer. And that's why you never, ever want to start prayer without first thanking God praising God and blessing God. And even more than that, while after you've prayed, after you've made your request known and you're waiting for the answer to come, the Bible says, keep on thanking God while you are waiting. Continue to thank God while you're waiting for the answer to come. Colossians 4.2 says, continue in prayer and be watchful with thanksgiving. So when you're watching out for the answers to prayer, that's not a time to get worried or all anxious. When is it going to happen? When is the answer going to come? No, you watch by thanking God, by worshiping God. You watch out for the answer by worshiping and thanking God. That's what we're told to do. In Philippians chapter 4, verse 6, it says, Do not worry about anything, but pray and ask God for everything you need. And then it now says, And when you pray, always give give thanks. I love how the Living Bible says it. He says, don't forget to thank him, to thank God the Father for the answers. So the way you wait for the answer to come, the way you watch out for the answer is not by worrying, but it's by thanking God, by worshiping God. And I tell you, if you worship God while you're waiting for the answer to come, you are not going to wait for too long before it comes because God just loves thanksgiving. It is a power that triggers speedy answers to prayer. So I do trust you were blessed today and you're excited as I am to learn about this strategy of effective prayer. Come back next week as we talk about the third step in this strategy. And don't forget if you've not done so, hit that red sub subscribe button please and the notification bell and also follow all my social media handles, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. God bless you.